As another sun sets and the pale moon rises over the proving ground, the wildest creatures go to meet for the clash, the ultimate test of wits and ability. You playing the game Combo Clash will gather your unique, unique creatures into their, your hand, place them down onto a board, and try to create combos. Combos of three or more of the same creature will then give you points based on that number, in addition to unique abilities that each creature has. Your objective? To score the most points up to the objective total. You can play a shorter game or a longer game if you would like, depending on the number of points you'd like to play, and whoever can get to that point total first is the winner. But be prepared, because each creature has an ability that can do something unique on the turn that it is played, whether it be to draw additional creatures, or move creatures on the board, flip certain creatures face down, or flip them face up. When the board fills and everybody's got tiles face down, you remove those tiles and thusly be able to place more tiles out in order to create even more combos in the game. Are you ready to take a look at the game Combo Clash by Hub Games? It plays two to four players and takes about 20 to 30 minutes to play. Let's show you the game. Welcome to the game Combo Clash, which is currently set up for two players, but if you wanted to play three or four players, you'd simply deal out five of these tiles to each player who wants to play. After you give every single player five of tiles, you're also going to deal out four tiles face up, one in each of the corners of this mat here, and you'll lay this mat out in front so everybody can see the mat and is available to access it. Each player that's in the game will choose a colored token, so in this case we'll have white and we'll have the red player over here, and you'll place it next to the one scoring marker area, which symbol symbolizes the amount of points you're going to gain throughout the round. You can choose the difficulty of the game, so we'll play a quick game here, which would be for 50 points, but you could play a longer one for all the way up to 100 if you'd like. Uh, every player should also be getting one of these tile reference cards that are both front and back to illustrate the different types of tiles or creatures in the game. Each player has got one of these, so I'll set this aside as well. And of course, the rulebook for the game for any additional questions. After you've got, go ahead and give everybody one of the references, five tiles and placed one in each of the corners here and set your markers there. You're ready to begin the game. Make sure the deck has been placed right here in the middle and choose a player to begin. And that player is going to look at their hand. They can play as many tiles as they would like and then they will pass. When they pass, they'll draw back up to their hand size of five and the next player will get a chance to go. On your turn, when you choose to play a tile down, you have to play it adjacent to another tile that's already on the board, face up or face down, or adjacent to this deck of cards here, which means they can never be played kitty corner. They must always be played up, down, left, or right. And when you play a tile, you can interact with its ability. You can use its ability or not. But if you choose not to use its ability, then you're not going to be able to use it later. The only exception to the rule is the chameleon. This one counts as any creature that is next to it when scoring combos. In order to score a combo, you need to have three of the same type of creature card. So for instance, I'll play this kangaroo next to this chameleon here and then that's going to be two kangaroos. Uh, this ability will trigger allowing me to move uh, one tile on the board adjacent, and then I can go ahead and do another one. And this will let me move this guy adjacent. And then this would actually trigger a combo. I've got three kangaroos out because of this specific chameleon ability, in which case all these get flipped over, and I'm going to score the number of points in the top right times the number of combos, in which case this is three for three. That will score me nine points. Uh, then I can also go ahead and play something like this wolf here. This wolf says... When I place it down, I'll score points equal to the number of tiles in my hand, which in this case is two, one and two. Had I used this one first, I would have scored an additional two points because these kangaroos would have still been in my hand. Another thing to note too is when you place down the tiles and they flip over for any reason, whether it be combos or creature abilities, you may not peek at these again, unless a card or creature ability says otherwise. Uh, and then you can keep going if you'd like. So I could, if I wanted to, uh, play this gorilla. And this gorilla says I can discard my hand and draw another one. Um, in which case, that would be pretty useful. See, this is the chameleon here, right? This is also a chameleon. I could place this guy here. And that would then score me nine points. Three, six, and nine. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. That would get me really close to my goal already. That's a lot of points there. I'm out of tiles now. I have no more I can utilize, so I would take from the top of the deck here. One, two, three, four, and five, and that would end my turn, and then it would go on to the red player's turn. The red player has got, ooh, he's got some <laughs> alligators here, so the alligator can go ahead and play this, and the alligator's ability says that they can flip one or two tiles face down and score one point for each. So I'll flip these two down. That'll score me two points. Uh, and I could go ahead and play this wolf over here. That will score me three points. One, two, three. And then I could play another alligator, flip this guy over for another point, play another alligator, and choose not to use his ability, in which case now I'm going to score uh, points in a combo of four. So I would score one point 
for each of these guys here, which is a total of four more points. One, two, three, and four. And finally, I've got the Skirilli here. I'll just simply go ahead and play him down and thusly draw back up to my hand size of five combo cards. After that, it will go back and forth. And that's basically how the game will work. And eventually what will happen is the board will get filled. When the board gets filled, you're going to replace any face down tile, putting that into a discard pile, and then you're going to continue the play. So there's going to be more spaces that open up. If for any reason, all the tiles are face up on the board, then what happens is you're going to take all tiles except for the corner tiles and remove them from play. And then you are going to pl continue play from there. If you ever run out of cards in the deck, you will reshuffle your discard pile, you'll put them back into the deck, and you will continue playing up until the point where somebody gets to that coveted 50, 75, or 100 point total, in which case the game will end after the round ends, and whoever has the most points is the winner of Combo Clash. Combo Clash is all about scoring points and utilizing the creatures in your hand to the best of their abilities. Now, of course, some creatures are better used when there are more different types of creatures on the board, face up or face down, and others are better utilized in a larger group. Uh, sometimes you're going to be able to manipulate the board by placing things like the Chameleon down, which will basically replicate a tile next to it and their ability, or you can use something like the Gorilla here. And if you don't know what the abilities are, you can take a look at the score sheet and you go, oh, what's the Gorilla do again? Oh, you can discard your hand and draw an equal number of tiles based on what you discarded. Or for instance, if you want to use the kangaroo here, you can move any one tile to an empty adjacent space and so on and so forth. And your little example tiles here are going to be very helpful throughout the, throughout the game for your first one or two games. And after that, you're pretty much going to memorize the different characters in the game. They're pretty straightforward and they also work in tandem with the type of creature that they are specifically like the chameleon is going to you know, be a copy of or a replica of and the gorilla being able to be very strong and get rid of cards and draw new cards, uh, being able to gather extra points and whatnot with the werewolf when you play them based on the number of cards in your hand. And so you have to play them not only in the right order, but in the right locations as well. And there's certain rules as to how you can place them down. You have to always set them adjacent to a face up or face down tile or the deck itself, because the deck itself is part of the game and part of how you play the game. Another thing to note too is yes, there's a bit of luck in this game. If you draw certain tiles on your turn based on the board state, you're going to have an advantage in the game. But in reality, the most important thing you can do in this game is make sure you place the tiles down in the correct areas at the correct times. And that's what really is going to set you apart from the other players. It's a pretty quick game. It's pretty straightforward. There's only about six different abilities or eight different abilities in the entire game. And once you've kind of memorized those, it all comes down to when and where you place them. And you're not going to have a huge amount of trouble explaining the rules, either drawing the five car tiles, placing them down as many times as you'd like, and then when you run out of things to do or don't want to do anything else, you draw back up. Well, another thing to note too in this game is that when the deck starts uh, being emptied and you start filling the board up with tiles, flipping them over for combos, keeping them face up to utilize for later turns, provided they get to your turn, uh, you're going to also get down to realizing that there's going to be a certain time where the board's going to empty, and uh, that's going to provide a benefit for the next player. So do you want to kind of make them empty the board first and not allow yourself to play those tiles you need to score additional points, but thus not, not, thusly not helping them a lot on their next turn? That might be a, of good use to you. Or or uh, simply do you want to clear the board and start off the next round kind of preparing yourself, hopefully for what's going to be a beneficial landslide on your next turn. All these things kind of con come into consideration. This is a game that works with families. It's going to work with kids. It's very kid friendly and very simple and easy to teach. There's a little bit more complexity. And as you play, you'll start getting better and better, learning the different combinations and scoring tactics. Obviously, if you can score four of these in a row, uh, that's going to be more helpful than the three combos. But in order to do that, you'll need to kind of have like a two here and a one here and then you connect the three up with a singular one that will score you additional points uh, some of these guys are worth more points than others obviously going for the gorillas are going to net you additional points than you would going for like the werewolf or maybe the alligator here but abilities are also in tandem with the points so an ability that's very good probably is going to be uh, a combo that's not very powerful as far as points go in the game and you have to kind of deduce when and how you want to play these uh, sometimes it's even better to place down tiles that would normally score you points to prevent your opponents from scoring points or make them utilize their creatures in ways that normally they wouldn't want to maybe they'll have to switch uh, the movement of a certain tile to another area in which case they can then score points utilizing their combos well, the quality of the game is very high it's very nice it's got thick uh, sturdy plastic or wooden tiles here. These guys are nice. You're not going to have any problems with them. They'll last the test of time. It also comes with a play mat, which is, you know, 
it's decent. It's not like uh, the grade of like what you would see like a game topper or whatnot, but it's going to be able to be foldable and placeable into the into the box here, and you can take it out and flatten it out. It feels nice. It looks like it'll last as long as you're careful with it. Obviously, don't spill anything on it. It's not going to be uh, super useful if you do that. Um, and the rules are very easy to understand the game. For those people who really enjoy games that are uh, tile placement, very simple and straightforward, a game that's quick, that is replayable, and while it has replayability, you're simply going to have the same functions each and every time. I expect that there's potentially, if this game does well, they could make expansion content that would include new animals and new different types of wild abilities that can be added through the game. But what's here is pretty simple and straightforward. Uh, if you're looking for a game with a little bit more meat on it, a little bit more deeper strategy, something that's going to be a little heavier or weightier, uh, it's probably not the game for you. There's also a little bit of aggressive combination, combinational attacks or combo attacks that can happen in this game. And if you don't like being messed with, especially when you're playing two players, maybe something to avoid, but uh, that's also a benefit for other players. I personally really enjoyed this game. I really like the combination mechanic. I also like the fact that the board gets cleared and that actually plays into the gameplay of the game. And I also like the fact that the game is quick and simple and to the point. And I was able to play multiple times on my first sitting of this game, even though I didn't have a lot of time to play games. So it was kind of interesting because even after we left, I was like, you know, I would like to actually play one more time now that I'm really getting the hang of this game because each time I was playing it, I was learning anymore and I got better with it even though I won the first time and I continue to win so I, I don't know if that helps or not. Uh, overall though a satisfying combo tile placement game that's simple and quick and easy to understand with a decent amount of replayability and high quality components. Take a look at the game it's down below in the description by Hub Games Combo Clash. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Combo Clash by Hub Games. If you're interested in picking up a copy, link down below in the description, as well as, of course, subscribe to the channel. Hit that subscribe button and the bell notification button. It does greatly help us out here at Unfiltered Gamer, and we do greatly, greatly appreciate it. You can also go ahead and check out my wife's game, Moonshell and Mermaid Game. It's currently funded on Kickstarter with over $16,000 and I believe over 350 backers. So congratulations to her. She did a lot of hard work to get the game funded, and I'm very, very proud of her. If you're interested in puzzle games, uh, tile placement games uh, similar to this one in some ways, uh, this might be a good opportunity for you to take a look at that game as well. Uh, it's linked down below in the description as well, Moonshell, a mermaid game. One of the very few mermaid games in existence. You can also go ahead and check out our live streams every Wednesday, 6.30 p.m. PST, where we play games just like this one. In fact, I'd like to play this one next week, uh, every week on Facebook, YouTube, and now Twitch as well. So all three platforms will have our live stream available if you want to watch us play games and see if they're for you because I think that's the best way of knowing if you want to play a game is seeing it in action seeing it played and hearing what people think in the moment as opposed to just a review video uh, you can also go and check out our discord we have a discord and a patreon uh, thank you patreon members for supporting us for so long it's helped us endear us to continue making videos and content for you guys to be able to allow you to see the type of games that are out there and things that might be interesting for you all right guys <laughs> that's all I got for you this time and as always I look forward to uh, clashing with some combos with you next time.